about what this means for solving quadratic. So what's a little different about these next three examples? Okay, so they equal zero. I'm going to still solve them the same way, but when I write it in this form, in our heads, this is what this means. Where does this parabola, because when we graphed it last unit, wasn't it a parabola? Where does this parabola equal zero? That's what it means. So in a minute, we're going to graph it, and you're going to see the relationship between these two. We're going to solve it now by doing what we did before. So we should add 5 first. Agree? Okay. Mm -hmm. Would you add 5 to both sides? We get 2x squared equals 5. Now do what? Good. We get x squared equals 2.5. I don't real I don't have any choices on this. I'm going to have to use my calculator to simplify because it's a decimal. I take the square root. x squared equals what do I have to put in front here? Thank you. x equals plus or minus. The square root of 2.5 is what I meant. Okay. Is 1.581 about? Um, would you graph? We're going to hop down to 7 in a minute. So do you notice that these are the ta the same equation? 2x squared minus 5, okay. No, I'm just, so now what if I had asked us to graph this? This is review from last unit. Do you guys remember how it's um, moved down 5 from the parent function? So it's a vertex of 0, negative 5, what does this 2 mean? Go over, one. Go over 1, up 2 from the vertex. Alright, I'm going to circle something now. What I just circled are the x-intercepts. Now I know what they are. From above, what are the x-intercepts? 1.581 and negative 1. So are you seeing the connection between the solving and the graph? All right, so they're approximately, this is 1.5810 and negative 1.5810. Okay, cool. Next one. What? I can't do that. Oh, I can do it. Divide by 3. Well, what's 0 divided by 3? Zero. 0. Okay, x squared equals 0. Take the square root. x equals plus or minus. I'm not really going to have plus or minus because what's the square root of 0? Zero? 0. You, you don't have plus or minus 0. It's just 0. This has an x-intercept of 0, which makes sense when you look at the graph. This is just the parent function times 3. So where the vertex would be 0, 0. And I would go over 1, up 3. All right. And so this one just has one x-intercept because the parabola has a vertex of 0, 0. It's the same as its vertex. Cool. All right. Let's look at that next one. So I would subtract 3, agreed? Two x squared equals negative 3, now what do I do? Divide by 2. x squared equals negative 1.5. And we're going along and we take the square root and maybe you notice already I put a plus or minus in front. 
Uh oh. What happened? You can't take the square root of a negative number. We talked about this yesterday. Because take the square root of negative 49, for instance. 7 times 7 gives me 49. But negative 7 times negative 7 still gives me 49. You can't, you don't get a real answer. If you put it in your calculator, Kayla, did you try it? Yeah. Does it say non-real answer? Yeah. Okay. So this means no real answer. You can just write that down. What, what do you think that means for the x-intercepts? There are none. So let's look at the graph. It makes sense when I graph it. This is the parent function moved up 3. So it would have a vertex at 0, 3. Is there option at the time the soft lockdown has been lifted? So let's see what we go about. Is there a normal business day? Thank you. Okay, so if I keep going, what would I do to get the rest of the point? Okay, this is just good review from last unit. All right, and we see that this has no x intercepts, right? Hopefully that makes sense with that. This has one x intercept. At zero, zero. All right, so at the bottom you see this thing called imaginary numbers. What are those? Okay, they're imaginary. Okay, so Kayla, you have this calculator, right? With me or anybody who else does. Would you go to the, the mode and go down to where it says real? Do you see it says real? Move it over one to A plus B I. Okay, you good? And then get out of there. Remember yesterday how, um, or just before, Kayla, you took the square root of negative 1.5 and it said no real answer, right? Watch this. Did it give me an answer? Yeah. What's at the end, way end of the answer? Do you see I. it? An I. Okay. We're going to spend some time in a, in a few weeks talking about imaginary numbers. They're not real because they are... Right? We, no x-intercepts. It doesn't cross it. Here's what you need to know about imaginary numbers. There's this imaginary unit and it's called i. And i is equal to the square root of negative 1. It's not real. They're not a, it's not a real answer. You're not going to see it on the graph. Um, so just so we're clear, if you were to square both sides, that means that i squared is negative 1. What it allows me to do is if I say find the imaginary root, my example would be like this. The square root of negative 36 would be 6i. Okay, Okay, so at this point, you...